something something deep that I've been thinking about a lot but I haven't resolved is you know I'm this digital collector I want to have and literally you know hundreds of thousands of these digital objects these fi files in my collection why do I need a copy of any of them uh, when I could access the canonical copy the artist copy or the copy on the internet I can just sip from it whenever I need it and that's always guaranteed to be the best if the artist fixes their work well it's fixed automatically for everyone if it's like that well uh, but, but then there's different people who have different mm -hmm. ideas about fixing yes yes yeah, of course of course it's Star Wars of course so, so ultimately the reason I have to go through this incredible pain to maintain all these artists to have my own is because uh, I don't want to be separated from it. If, 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 it, if I'm accessing the canonical copy in the net all the time, well, that my access rights can be turned off. Uh, and so, in a way, it's a freedom issue uh, that I'm carrying around all this digital baggage. But I think it's important for people to be able to have copies. And I think, but I do think it gets into some you know, it's a fairly deep philosophical thing that you were saying is the artist copy. In a way, it's an obsolete concept. Uh, when, when you're creating out of physical materials, there was a canonical copy. You know, a copy that's more perfect than the others, a copy that's original, you know, and it really, really mattered. But if the thing you're creating is made of bits, uh, I don't think there is a canonical copy. There is is a con canonical copy just by the artist christening it that. But the copies made from the can canonical copy are truly identical. They're not distinguished. And so a painting, a sculpture, you know, that has this quality of, you know, being associated with certain atoms. Uh, and it's a real thing in the world. So that's different.